This video is exposing the great betrayal of Communist Party of India, in which the party betrayed Indian people and independence movement, from 1942 onwards. It was a secret deal between the British and the Communist Party of India. The secret is now open with documents from National Archives of India. The Indian Communist Party was against British till June 1941. They fought against British, just because Joseph Stalin, was having a secret military pact with Adolf Hitler. Stalin-Hitler pact was a secret plan, to invade and share several countries, including Poland. But, Hitler's sudden military attack against Soviet Russia, changed the stands of communist parties all over the world. Stalin was not expecting an attack from Hitler and he had to take Britain's support to fight against Hitler. The Communist International of Soviet Union, which controlled, all the communist parties around world, gave orders to support the British. So the Communist Party of India is also forced to support the British government. The British India office sends a secret letter in January 1942 to all Indian provincial governments, to consider a new treatment towards groups including Indian communists. The Crips mission was a failed attempt in late March 1942, by the British government to secure full Indian cooperation and support for their efforts in World War II. The mission was headed by a senior minister, Sir Stafford Cripps and he failed to get support from all Indian parties fighting for freedom. But he succeeded in establishing links with Mr. P. C. Joshi, the then General Secretary of CPI. The Secretary of Cripps requested British government to suspend P. C. Joshi's arrest warrant for his interview with Cripps in Delhi. The very next day the arrest warrant got suspended for 10 days for Mr. Joshi, to travel to Delhi. P.C. Joshi and Cripps had secret talks and agreed for more secret talks. Joshi contacted, Sir Reginald Maxwell, the then Home Department member, and established a good relationship. In April 1942, additional secretary to the Government of India, Sir Richard Tottenham, sent a communication to all provincial governments to consider releasing communists with no criminal records. The intelligence bureau suggested to withdraw the arrest warrants against P.C. Joshi, if he is ready to play the game. It also suggested reissuing the warrant, in case he is not ready to play the game. Immediately the warrant against Joshi withdrew with a clear instruction, to reissue it at a later date and giving him one month notice period. The government cancelled the arrest warrant of Joshi dated March 6, 1940. Richard Tottenham sent a secret communication to all provincial governments, dated April 30, 1942, clearly indicating that they made a secret plan with Communist Party of India. In which he wrote, we have reason to believe Joshi may now be willing to lend unconditional support to war effort. He also instructed provincial governments to reissue the warrant if Joshi is not willing to play the game. Bengal provincial government too cancelled their arrest warrant against Joshi, as he agreed to play the game. The relationship between Communist Party of India and Indian government became very effective, and the government became more lenient towards the party. On June 8th, 1942, British government sent a four-page communication to all provincial governments, to release communist leaders in jail, mentioning some of the important leaders. As per the secret plan and cooperation, British government removed the Communist Party ban and supported them for their new propaganda war. The secret friendship was a win-win situation for both parties. The party started getting special subsidies and supports from the government for their new tactical line. They called it People's War. The party started getting helps from the government for more newspaper and electricity quotas. Communist Party started newspapers in most of the Indian languages to support British war effort. 
and that is to weaken Indian independence movement. Party promised the British government to work against Indian freedom movement by the people of the country. In letters to British government, Party claimed that, they are the only party which has patriotic policy for national defense and unity. Communist Party's new tactical line and propaganda started to function. They attacked all national organizations including Congress. Party propaganda machinery explained that the freedom movement will harm the country. They organized public speeches and attacked, Subhash Chandra Bose and called him Japanese agent. In public, they also criticized British government policies to bluff the people. The party organized pro-British propaganda programs like National Unity Week when the people of the country fighting for freedom. The party even organized public programs for Hindu-Muslim unity as part of its propaganda to support the British. And they were the first people to support division of India as Muslim Pakistan. Communist Party blamed all people fighting for India's freedom as fifth column. Fifth column refers to the people who fight against the country from inside. In their letters to the government, British officials noted that the party seems to be referring everyone else as fifth column. In fact, Indian communists were doing the job of fifth column. By then, the government of India received clearance from Britain's war cabinet which then was headed by Winston Churchill for the new policy towards communist party in India. Communist Party of India had more plans and demands. They contacted British government to release more party members, which government of India refused to accept. Government hesitated to release party members with serious crime records. The party also had troubles with local and provincial governments. So PC Joshi sent a memorandum consists of more than 130 pages to home member Reginald Maxwell with a cover letter. The memorandum is prepared province-wise, and it listed out the party members to be released. It also listed out, all pro-British propaganda programs they conducted so far and claimed that they are working hard for British and for the war effort. PC Joshi included a nine-page summary inside and it describes the party's future propaganda plans. There is separate heading for Kerala and subheading for Malabar, Kochi, and Travancore, in the memorandum. Communist leaders such as Siakhu Tamenan, A.K. Gopalan, and E.K. Nayanar are mentioned in it. The Indian public became suspicious about the Communist Party and their position. Gandhiji did write a letter to P.C. Joshi and questioned his party's stand. Gandhiji accused the party is helping British to arrest freedom fighters and raised questions about party's funding. He also alleged that the Communist Party policies are dictated from outside. Joshi replied him but not revealing the party secrets. Some Indian newspapers too criticized Communist Party stands. And they blamed that the party betrayed Indian people. It was difficult for even some of the Communist Party factions to digest the new policy. They complained that it is not clear. P.C. Joshi himself had to meet them to lecture about the party's policy shift. The British court issued death penalty in Kyur case to five Communist Party workers in Kerala. They had involved in killing a police officer when the party was anti-British. But when the death penalty order came, the Communist Party was with British. One escaped from death penalty as he was minor. P.C. Joshi visited the four comrades on their last evening as party general secretary. He hid the truth from the Kyur heroes that the party stand now is with the British. The party was losing the Indian public support. Party knew that they cannot reveal secrets to the public. They asked the government to release jailed Congress leaders during the Quit India movement just to retain public support. However, the British government even asked PC Joshi for clarification on that matter. During the meeting with a British officer in 1946, Dr. Ambedkar revealed that, he had information that the Communist Party accepted money and arms from British military. He also claimed that Communist Party participated in war for the British in Burma. In fact, 
Communist Party of India tried to use British support for party's growth. They assumed that one day with the support of Soviet Union, China and Britain, they will be able to rule India or at least some parts of India. And after the Indian independence, they tried to topple the Indian government in 1948 through a bloody armed revolution. And luckily they failed. <laughs>